Hey guys, thanks for taking the time to watch this video on managing your plugins in VIP. The virtual instrument player software that comes with the advanced keyboards can open virtually any VST instrument. Because there are so many VST instruments available, it's important to know the best way to keep things organized. And that's what we'll cover here. Here you can see I have the VIP software open. Our plugins list and all of our tags are completely empty. This is because currently I don't have any plugins scanned. So scanning our plugins is the first thing we'll do. Let's go to the settings menu and select the plugin manager. Down in the plugin folder section is where we'll select the folders that our VST instruments are located. On a Mac computer, that's on the Macintosh hard drive in the library folder, audio, plugins, VST. Now if you're running Windows, your 32-bit or 64-bit VST instruments can be installed virtually anywhere on your computer's hard drive, so you'll have to know where you've chosen to install these plugins. Here are some common locations for the instruments to be installed to. For 64-bit VSTs, on your C drive in the Program Files folder, VST plugins, or Program Files Steinberg VST plugins. Now for 32-bit VSTs, this could be in the Program Files x86 VST plugins folder, or Program Files x86 Steinberg VST plugins. You can scan two folders in VIP at one time. I'm on Windows here, so I'll click here and navigate to this folder, and click Select Folder. You can see the folder is now listed here. Now I simply click Scan, and it will begin. Some VST instruments install multiple versions, each with different numbers of inputs and outputs. So if you see a plugin listed multiple times, that's normal. The check boxes in the left column here determine the plugins that you want to use or not use if you uncheck the box. If you have duplicates, it's okay to uncheck the boxes, like I'll uncheck the box for contact here, and this extra one for absinthe. Alright, now that I'm ready, I'll click OK. Now VIP will begin adding these newly scanned plugins. You'll see a progress bar at the top left corner here indicating the presets are being imported. If you've just added a large amount of plugins, it's best to wait until VIP is finished importing first. If you start clicking on presets in VIP or calling them up on your advanced keyboard during this process, it will respond very slowly. So let it finish this first time around. You'll only have to do this once. You'll know when it's done when there is no longer a progress bar moving at the top left corner here and when all the plugins in the browser here are no longer grayed out. Now, you might be asking, how does VIP import these presets automatically? This is one of the things that makes VIP so great. VIP uses what we call plugin maps. Plugin maps tell VIP about your VST instrument's factory presets, which parameters in your VSTs map to which controls on your advanced keyboard, and finally your tags, like the instrument type, timbre quality, the musical genre, and what type of articulation it is. VIP version 1.0 installs with over 300 plugin maps included for the most popular VST instruments out there. But beyond that, if there is not a plugin map already made for a particular VST instrument of yours, VIP will still try to request a list of those presets from it automatically during the scanning. Now, there might be some VSTs that don't have a plugin map and won't communicate with VIP when it asks for its presets. That's okay though. Let's allow VIP to finish importing my plugins here and then we'll take a look at some examples of this. Okay, so now our plugins are done scanning. You can see in our browser view that some new VST instruments are in the plugin list and they have the numbers of presets right next to them. If I select the plugin in the list, all of its available presets will show into the list on the left. You'll notice each VST has a number of presets available except for contact, which only has one. Contact, by Native Instruments, is a good example of a VST instrument that uses expansions. Contact loads sound libraries internally, which is why VIP will only find one preset the first time you scan it. I'll double click on this default contact preset here, which will open up the contact window in VIP, and you'll see a single empty preset. Contact organizes its expansion libraries to the left here, so in order to import the plugin maps for these expansions, first, load a preset from one of the expansions. So in this case, we'll load the giant.
Once the expansion is loaded, go up to the File menu in VIP and select Import Plugin Map. Now we want to import everything available from the plugin maps here, so make sure the Patches, Tags, and Controller Settings box is checked. Click in the box here below Map File, and a browser window will open up right to VIP's Plugin Maps folder. In this case, we're looking for Contact 5, the giant. And here it is, and we'll click Open. Now click the Import button. And a few seconds later, it'll finish and you'll get that familiar prompt, your plugin maps have finished importing. Just click OK. Now you'll notice the giant will show up in the expansions column here, and all of the new presets will be added to the list on the left. Now you'll simply repeat the same process for your other expansions here. Just open the preset expansion in the plugin, select import plugin map from VIP's file menu, and then point it to the proper plugin map and click OK to load it. That's it. Now, any of you who own Native Instruments Complete will have quite a few Contact expansion libraries to load, but Contact is not the only VST instrument that loads expansions or add-on libraries in this way. Native Instruments Reactor or Spectrosonics Omnisphere are other examples of plugins that work in the same way. So now I'll run through the same process for the rest of my expansions. Okay, so I've loaded all my expansions here. Now I'll cover some ways that you can import new presets into VIP manually. If you've been using VST instruments for a long time, you've probably added a lot of your own custom presets. So being able to import new presets easily is important, and VIP does this well. Now I'm going to open a preset in Vacuum Pro here as an example. I'll click this button at the top right corner of VIP to open the plugin interface in a separate window. Now in Vacuum Pro, our presets are listed in the top right corner here. You can see all the factory presets here. And at the bottom of the list, we have our user presets. So I'm going to go in here and load one of these, My Preset 1. At the top left corner of VIP, right above the preset list, is a button that will import individual presets. When you click this, whatever preset is currently loaded in your VST instrument will be imported into VIP's preset list. So I'll click this, and you'll see that VIP adds this new preset to the bottom of the current list. It also gives you the opportunity to rename that preset if you want to. I'll just hit enter here to save it as my preset one. And it's that easy. Now, if you have a large amount of new or custom presets that you want to import into VIP, doing one at a time may be a bit tedious. So another method you can use is called Auto Import. If I go back up to our Preset Import button and right click, you'll see an option for Auto Import. So I'll select this, and now you'll notice the Preset Import icon begins to strobe, indicating Auto Import mode is enabled. Now, whenever you change to a new preset in your VST instrument, VIP will automatically import it. So in Vacuum Pro, I'll go to my next preset, and you can see it's automatically added to the list. And I can keep on scrolling through our presets, and VIP will keep on adding the new presets automatically. This way you can quickly add new presets. Now one thing you want to avoid when using the auto import function is accidentally making a duplicate of a preset you've already saved. So VIP lets you choose if you want to allow duplicates or not per plugin. Whenever you have a plugin loaded in VIP, there will be a plugin attributes section at the bottom left. And here you can check or uncheck the allow duplicate patches box. Now whether you'd want this on or off depends on your own personal workflow. Okay, I hope this video helps you keep things organized when importing all your VST instruments. Be sure to check out our other advanced and VIP videos and you'll be an expert in no time. Now let's go make some music. <laughs>